Hello and welcome to another episode of Monster Prom. Today I am trying out the new second term and seeing how that is. I have not uploaded a video in a while, so decided I'll bring you guys in with uh, this new DLC and see how it is. Ah, Spooky High School, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. Uh, we were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. So like usual, I will pick Oz. By the way, if I forget the voices of the characters, <laughs> don't blame me. It's just so hard to keep up with all of them, so I'll probably end up changing them every now and then. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the Monster Prom. And we also have new characters, apparently. We have, uh, I believe that one's Zoe, and this one's Calculester. But, uh, yeah, and then we got the regular bunch that we usually have. Anyway, I remember it clearly six weeks we were left. And as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our eight most charismatic classmates. Scott Howell, 21. A werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Yeah, you better be careful with that cute face. Then we have Polygeist, 22 possibly. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all wrong things. And yep, definitely all wrong things. Damien LaVey, 21. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Liam de Lioncourt, 400 possibly. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a livable dork. Zoe. An eldritch cutie who went from endless deity of the dark realms to ultimate fangirl. Calculester Hewlett Packard, Volume 1.0. A library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. And Vera o Oberlin, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had been one of them, but who? We only had six weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had six weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to the Monsters Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever trademark will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. If you were the leader of a new country, what would your flag look like? Let's see, option number one. I'd go for a simple three-colored stripe approach, where each color represents one of the country's values. Blue for diplomacy purple for patience, and red for the blood that will be spilled if anyone tries to overthrow me. <laughs> I like that one. And then we got um, number two. Flags are outdated symbols that lead to an un unnecessary nationalist ex exhalation. We will replace flags with a national QR code <laughs> that will provide Taco Bell coupons and lead you to my SoundCloud. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I like that one. That was funny. Just Garfield's face. It's a power move. There's no doubt you're the supreme leader of your land. If no one stops you from making Garfield the flag of your country. Yeah, that's true. But I like this one. Boom. Number one. 
If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? A great white shark. If I have to F an animal, let's at least make it a story worth telling. Choo choo choo. A human being, because I'm the kind of douchebag who loves to find loopholes in stupid questions like this one. That sounds more like me. A swan, they're classy, plus it reminds me of that myth of Leda and the swan. So at least by bestiality standards, it has a certain chic appeal. I'm gonna go with number two. The world will end tomorrow, what will you do today? It's okay, we invented the apocalypse to take care of the overpopulation of commoners. Netflix and chill. A <laughs> hundred push-ups, no, no, two hundred push-ups. I always party as if they were, there were no tomorrow, so who cares? I would panic because that's what real organic people do, and I am a real organic person. They always tell you the world is ending. I'll profit on another people's hysteria. I think I will go with this one just because I think I'm, I'm going for Miranda, so I think she would say this one. Yes, of course. Your partner just gave you a cool gift for your anniversary, but you totally forgot. Quick, come up with an idea for a great gift. A silly toy that makes silly noise. The head of their fiercest enemy. The friendly Roomba with wobbly eyes. Anything on fire or a weapon. No, no, a weapon on fire. Anything capable of leading them to an overdose of some sorts. The abstract concept of gratefulness. <laughs> uh, these are all tough. So I want to try to get. See if I can get Zoe, the new girl, but I'm not really sure. I um, feel like Toy would be like, what's his face? The head of the f their fiercest enemy. Friendly Roomba with wobbly eyes. What the heck is a Roomba? Uh, anything on fire, that'll probably be Damien. Of gratefulness, that one's probably Liam. Anything capable of leading them, that will probably be Polly. Silly toy, that feels like that'll be Scott. I think I'm going to go with the head of their fiercest enemies. Oh, okay, Vera. Oh, she wasn't on there, so. Oh, well. We must continue. Alright, so we're going to go get some money. That day, you spend some time on the library's PC, managing your start kicker. Start kicker. You deceive lots of people with a sensationalist video and impossible promises. Nice. You gain a hundred, uh, no. Yeah, a hundred thousand money. But almost everything goes to cover costs, and you keep only plus two money. So, Uber Benito Bros. That should be a game. We got uh, 420 backers, 18,920, <laughs> oh my god, and 29 days to go, wow. So is that like on the first day, that's how much we got? <clears throat> All right. Later, you see Miranda and Vera, cornered by the wolf pack. Who are watching them like a pack of wolves? How would one of you ladies like to go on a date tonight with the hottest dogs ever not to be little hot dogs? I would int at all. This is not at all how I like my courtships to begin. Where are the jewels? Where are the flowers? Where are the bloody heads of my enemies? Oh, man. We'll show you courtship on the court. When we win on the court at sports. We'll show you oh, sports ships. Sportship courtship, okay. 
Every time I think the guys at this school can't get any dumber. Oh, I get it. You're both shy. Don't worry. Our barks are worse than our bites. Except when we're doing sports. Because then we bring it on. Yeah. But if neither of you have the confidence to say which one wants to go out with us tonight, we can just choose for you. Yikes. Like, they're relatively well-intentioned, but you should definitely step in and save one of them. Uh, so we have tonight, Miranda Kent. I have two tickets to Cirque de la Mer's underwater show. And then we have, you don't want to go out with Vera. I hear her sneaks have some... <laughs> I'm going to go with Miranda because I'd I rather go after Miranda than, um, than Vera. Miranda's eyes light up like an anglerfish. Cirque de la Mer. As a little girl, I... Oh, oh fuck. Cirque de la Mer? As a little girl, I always wanted to be an aqua gymnast. Of course you did. Until I realized it required hard work and discipline. At which point, I decided I was much happier as a princess. But I still love watching it. How thoughtful of you to procure tickets for me and my favorite m maidservant. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> Shut down. Let's go write a list of our, of jokes we can make about this awkward loser. Uh, whatever. You still made Miranda super happy and distracted the wolf pack, so win. You gain plus two charm and win creativity. Awesome. Alright, so we are at the kitchen. We will definitely go with uh, Vera, I mean, not Vera, Miranda and Zoe. It's not like Zoe and Miranda aren't always the perkiest of gals, but they seem extra perky as they skitter around writing things down in notebooks. Doubtless you are admiring our great work, Oz. You see, we are now food critics. Zoe has hired me for her magazine. Totally a real food magazine. It's an honor to have you on board, your highness. Zoe holds up a bunch of papers stapled together with doodles and crayons that seem to be eldritch runes with some sparkly scratch and sniff stickers stuck on top. If you are quiet and subservient, you may watch us on our quest, in our quest, to be the first best food critics ever. I was a little hesitant about founding this very legitimate magazine, since I'm new to eating things other than minds and souls. And I usually have my eating serfs eat for me. But then Zoe and I realized we were the absolute best for food critics according to our test audience. Which was comprised of Miranda's food serves. Now watch we'll us create culinary criticism, magic, first up, macaroni and cheese. This food item contains both macaroni and cheese, and therefore deserves five stars for this accurate description. Next, Koskias with vegetables. I think. I think that's <laughs> Koskias. Koskias, I'm guessing. I've never tried it, and the pieces seem way too small even register in my many mouths. I won't try it either. But the names sound very, very fancy. So five stars. Here is this microwave. <laughs> ah, yes. This is very shiny and very cubic shaped, which are both good quality for food. For a food. Five stars. <laughs> Here are some French fries. They don't seem to be particularly French. 
but they do seem particularly unfrench either. Oh dear, how will we ever determine their Frenchosity? Oh my god, really? Their Frenchosity? Psh, easy, that's your specialty. Zoe, you should give the French fries a French kiss, worthy of the most epic of French fictions. To check how good they are at French kissing, and therefore calculate their Frenchosity. I think that would be boldness or creativity or fun. I don't think that would go well. And then we have Miranda. Obviously, you were the most qualified to determine this. The only way to establish Frenchosity is to actually go to France. Just send an eating surf over to check it out. That one seems like the most doable one, I think. So let's try that one. Mmm! An insightful decision indeed! It seems you truly understand the privileges of royalty, Ahas. After all, that's why they're called serfs, because they live to serve me. Hmm. You have a feeling that joke might be hit or miss written down. Hit or miss. <laughs> I guess you know. <laughs> oh, good. But thankfully, you're not reading it because this is a conversation. And out loud, the way Miranda says serve sounds enough like serve. That's that. The joke totally reads and is hilarious. Okay, but now what to do? We do while we wait for your surf to get back from France. That sounds like a typo or something. Now what do we what do we do? What do we do? I think now what do Oh so the two should be wrong then probably. Why, now I will fill you in on my weekly featurette for Totally Real Food magazine entitled Silverware. Silver there! <laughs> oh my god. Conversely, that joke is probably even funnier as a visual than spoken out loud. I don't remember commissioning that featurette. What's it about? You didn't! And it's about me telling you in what fancy arrangement fancy silverware should go for maximum fanciness. Now, if you're doing an inverted diamond solstice flower for an occasion like a semi-formal engagement or a black tie ass assassination, you want to make sure the sugar spoon is always in the northeast corner. You learn so much about silverware and dictatorship, which, you know, are very romantic topics for Miranda. By the time Surf returns to say that French fries aren't even from France, Miranda has him executed for interrupting. <laughs> Five stars. That's funny. Uh, let's see, we got money, 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 money. Morning. That day you spent some time on the library's PC mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any effing idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to two million dollars. Which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. You see Liam ta talking to Miranda. Miranda looks confused. And Liam looks frustrated. Uh oh. But I simply do not understand this art you are describing. You say that the art piece is a bathroom? No, no, no. For the hundredth time, the art piece is the experience of going into a bathroom, thinking it's an art piece. The artist proposedly gave the room number of bathrooms as the room number for the exhibit. Even though there was, as, was a whole room full of his paintings elsewhere in the building, it was revolutionary. It certainly seems very complicated. Personally, I prefer the 
ex exoplanet sculptures of the Atlantean Fifth Dynasty. You know, the man in the moon, the faces on Mars, all of Pluto, art on such a grand scale. Bah, that's not art. That's populism at its worst. Well, I don't think that bathroom business sounds like art. But how are we supposed to discuss art if we can't even agree on what it is? Oh, if only someone could come along and provide a satisfying definition of art, I would be so pleased. You've got this. No problem. It's so simple. Ah, let's see. We've got, um, art is a method for making worthless things into very expensive things. Art is an art unless it makes you feel bad feelings inside. I think I will go with the top question. Oh, how true! Mars was just a bunch of sparsely populated red rocks before Ghibli Grinston completed his masterpiece. After that, he was able to sell it to the Arcturons for a trillion dublons. The Martians weren't happy about it, but you know what they say. Sometimes we must suffer for other people's art. <laughs> Uh, that last bit is the only part of what you're saying that I agree with. So, that's what happened to life on Mars. You gained some new knowledge about the solar system, and also two smarts and one charm. Isn't that great? Isn't that great, huh? I feel like I need more charm, just saying. Let's go to the gym. That's where you get them charms. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but your delivery and inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain plus two charm. Ah, uh, woo is me. Ah. Uh. Could Miranda possibly be doing this because she wants attention? Only one way to find out. Oh, hello! I didn't see you there, as I was standing here, suffering gallantly in silence. Mm hmm In silence, she says. She did, and she wasn't, but okay. I had the most tragic injustice befall me earlier this morn. I was rejected from our school's water polo team. They claimed I was mistaken about how polo is conducted underwater. Excuse me, but I was raised underwater. How is one even supposed to play water polo without a heavily armored seahorse as a mount? How, I ask you. Perhaps I offended them when I implied they were too impoverished to afford sea steeds. If so, why I would love to make reparations. <laughs> but it may be too soon for me to show my face. Would you be so kind as to take them the gift of this omelet to begin the healing? I am told that peasants consider eggs to be a delicacy. Um, obviously. And what would make the gesture even better is the personal touch of... Well, let's see, we have toppings, caviar, eel, chocolate-covered sand crabs. They'll never forget this was a present from a mer princess. An elegant stenciled card with your sincerest apologies, a list of all their fears, and a bundle that comprise him for... <laughs> I kind of feel like this one would be something more that she would like. Oh, yes. How better to show that I am truly making an effort to get to know them on the most personal of levels. I shall do their names in beautiful calligraphy, print their fears in gold leaves, and I shall adorn their comprising nudes with adorable glitter stickers. 
I may have been misunderstood before, but how could anyone misinterpret this kind of gesture? Take the... Take the omelet and make sure to take lots of pictures to them eating the eggs so we can all remember how generous I was. With a kiss on the cheek, Miranda hands you the omelet and waves you, you on your way. You gain plus two smarts and plus one charm. That sounds good. That sounds good. We, we're doing good. All right, so we're at the kitchen, and where is Miranda? There she is. You waltz over to Miranda and Scott's stable to find them peering suspiciously into a burger. Secret sauce? Secret sauce? What dread mysteries do you conceal? Whoa, do you think the secret sauce can talk? Cool. Hey, secret sauce. What are you made out of? No, Scott. My question was rhetorical. Awesome. Mine was loud. Oh, it's no use. We will never discern the active ingredient of this delicious secret sauce. Unless you have an idea, Oz? Hmm. The blood of your father's enemies, Miranda. That's what, why it's so delicious. You're overthinking this, Scott. It's a sauce made of... I think I will like this one. I think she would be okay with this. Hopefully. Please. Blood? Of the air people? I didn't know the high school cafeteria cared about my family's ancient rivalry. And everyone knows the air people bleed candy syrup and barbecue sauce. I should have known. You know, I don't normally eat food myself. I have served for that, but I may have to make an exception. Ah, more blood. But I eat blood all the time. Like, pretty much every full moon. Scott's a little disappointed, but you don't care. You're busy sharing a saucy burger with Miranda. Yeah. We're getting in there, guys. We're getting in there. All right, so I still feel like we should get more money. So, ah, oh, crap. Is that the library? Um, I guess we can get more. I think. I guess we can use some fun. We got low fun. That would be the outdoors. But I think, I don't know, I kind of want more money. <laughs> I guess we could go do the gym then. And get some more charm. And that day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. But the match isn't in, as important as the human interactions within it. You're at your peak when you decide to go for the overkill and wink at one of your teammates. He's totally mesmerized. It's the most epic wink ever. Damn. You know how to win over people's hearts. You gain plus two charm. In the next game, you find yourself stuck on a team with, with Calculester, Miranda, and Liam. Three great friends with hot bots, but zero dodgeball skills. Correction, aggregate team dodgeball, skill index 5.6. Fine, I'll just show myself out then. So what, Calculester? We may not be very good at dodgeball, but we've got something even better on our side, me. I am a princess. The other team doesn't even have a... Lonely Viscount. Victory is ours by divine right. Whatever. We're obviously the charismatic underdogs in this situation. The other team might win the game, but we'll get the moral victory. Negative. The opposing team is a group of scrappy youths from the wrong side of the trucks. They are roughly 86% more sympathetic than we. 
according to my calculations, there is no logical way for us to achieve victory, moral or otherwise. Nonsense! Mandarets don't lose! Not at international intrigue! And not at dodgeball! We'll simply have to find a way of winning, beyond logic! Now, who among us is the most illogical... Oh, of course! Oz! What should we do? Hmm. So we've got Calculus sees no way to win because he's thinking like a robot. To win at dodgeball, you have to think like a ball. We have all been training for this our whole lives. Without knowing it, our day-to-day -day activities are actually deadly dodgeball moves. <laughs> I kind of like this one. I think this one would be better than this one. Because I think dodgeball, you'd have to be creative or fun. And I feel like this one would be more like smart and I don't know. Let's do this one. Please, please work. My goodness, of course! The peasants in my fiefdom attempt to hurl projectiles at me every day as I enter my diamond carriage. <laughs> and you dodge them all, making you an incredible dodgeball player after all. What? No! I have my, seat, my servants stand in the way so the projectiles hit them instead. And there's no reason I can't do that here as well. There are plenty of reasons, such as the rules of dodgeball, but no one wants to argue with Miranda's armed guards. So, there you go. <laughs> okay, we've got the protection now, but how are we supposed to fight back? All I do, all I do all day is drink blood, have objectively correct opinions about art. That's it, Liam. Go up to the other team and... Criticize their opinion about the aunt. I thought this day would never come. No! Drink their blood! They'll be too weak to dodge our throws! Oh, that's fine too, I guess. What about you, Calculesta? What everyday action will you use to aid us? I will shoot hornets out of my chest. It is very distracting. Through a combination of military force, <laughs> vampirism, and swarms of stinging insects, you turn the dodgeball game into a complete slaughter, just the way it was meant to be. You gain plus two bonus and one fun. <laughs> oh my god. Just imagine that, like, like freaking Miranda with her servants fighting off and protecting her while, um... Freaking, you see Liam sucking the blood out <laughs> of the other teams. And then you have freaking, uh, Calculester throwing at hornets at people. It's crazy. Alright, let's go for more money, because we need more money. The day you spend some time on the library's PC, sending malicious spam, emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares? And you gain plus 2 money. Oh, woe is me! Alas and alack a day! Miranda throwing a hissy fit. Must be Tuesday. Still, what else are you going to do? Study? Oh, hello! Don't mind me. I'm simply enduring the most horrible injustice to happen to anyone ever. You shan't believe such cruelty could happen to our own school, but just today, Mrs. the Loch Ness Monster told me that I shall, will, I shall be receiving a B-plus in her class. A B-plus? And all because I seldom attend? Attended? Does she not understand the importance of my daily royal manicures? Such a horrid grade would surely cause father to cease paying for my seahorse insurance as punishment. And then how shall a shell shooter call upon me? Oh, the tragedy. If only someone knew of a way I could. I don't know, perhaps... Breaking into the principal giant spider's office? 
access private computers and alter my grade? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, let's see. We have... Stick a web of files outside the principal's office. When he goes out to eat, we sneak in to cheat. Burst into tears. Spiders hate tears. I think the first one would be better. And I think we have enough for it. Boldness, I think. Yeah, we should be fine, I think. Let's go. Oh, it's smartness. Okay. My ladies in waiting are expert lace makers. I'm sure they shall have no problem dropping everything in order to detain a variety of bugs. Indeed, they don't, or are too terrified to object. And they create a sticky, gooey web. Principal Giant Spider emerges to gorge on dung beetles that are still smell of shit, which is apparently a thing spiders like. You and Miranda sneak into his office, and using the skills you learned in Cyber Terrorism 101, hack into the files, and in no time... Oh! Look at that! I have an A+. I guess I underestimated my own amazingness. I am very surprised by this development. <laughs> oh my god. I suppose as long as we're here, I might as well fill this thumb drive with top secret school security footage. No reason. That seems on the level. Definitely don't ask any follow-up questions. Just gain plus three charm and be cool with it. <clears throat> All right, let's see what's going on here. Uh, let's go with... Again, we'll go with... Uh... No sooner have you sat down at Damien and Miranda's table than a haunting melody fills the air. It is a melody of cold northern peaks, of cloying sweetness, of a supple bo bovine teat. The song of... The Ice Cream Wizard! He's here! He's here! I'm gonna eat so much ice cream! And then puke on someone I don't like! <laughs> oh my god. Oh goodness! The Ice Cream Wizard only comes but once per solstice! During the hour of the Ascended Pancake! You see an old dude in a floppy blue hat pushing a refrigerated card with this shit magic painted on the side. Ugh, so many great options to choose. Should I just get a magma bar? Brain destroyer? A chocolate blue stick? What about fear of death? A frozen cobra? Berserker berry blitz? The wizard's frozen treats invariably turn me into a frog for some reason. Perhaps I simply have not tied, tried the right one yet. But which to try? If only someone would suggest a solution to what is truly the most difficult problem I have ever faced. <laughs> oh my god. Try those sugar-based prince lips. Beat them up and take all this ice cream. I like that one. How broomish! Did someone say boorish? No, I said boorish! As in lacking social, uh, I see. You did not mishear me after all. But we're simply looking for an excuse to beat up the ice cream wizard. <laughs> Joke's on you, Miranda. I'm never not looking for an excuse to beat up the ice cream wizard. Look at all this ice cream I've got. This one lets you breathe underwater, and this one licks you. You brigand, you thief! I got you some sugar based prince lips. My reservations suddenly seem to have vanished. Good, because I want to try these popsicles. The stick is supposed to reveal how I'm going to die. Huh? Who knew my death would involve so many bottlenose dolphins? 
To celebrate the ice cream heist, Damien takes you to the beach and doesn't even try to drown you. <laughs> what? <laughs> it doesn't even try to drown me, what? And how did that turn into a date with Damien? Darn it. Uh, let's see. What should I do? Should I get more money? I just feel like I need more money. There's n never too much money. That day, you spend some time in the library's PC, playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid, dangerous decision, but who cares? This time, it paid off, so F it. You gain plus two money. You're hanging out with Polly afterwards, watching some porn like you do in the library, <laughs> okay? When you suddenly notice Miranda standing right behind you, who knows how long she's been there. Hello, good friends. What are you doing? Um, uh, nothing. Nothing at all. It does not seem to be nothing. That man seems to be kindly sharing his marmalade with us. Giant skunk? Explain this at once. Well, it's simply, you know, uh, it's really just the kind of, uh, well. So we have the options of, it's a cooking show. Yes, a cooking. Well, you see, Miranda, when a man and a giant skunk love each other very much. Uh, very, very much. Uh, huh. This one's a tough one just because I feel like if I tell her the truth... She might go crazy, but I kind of like this one. Let's do the cooking show. A cooking show? Oh crap, I'm not creative enough. Disgusting! What? Cooking is for poor people. It's upsetting. I can't believe I'm even watching this. No, wait, Miranda. It's okay. It's not cooking, it's porn. It's porn! <laughs> But it's too late. Miranda is gone, and the porn watching is ruined. You lose plus two charm and one smart. Great. You lose the charm. I lose charm. Oh, it's doing so good. That means I need more creativity, which I need to go to the auditorium for then. And that day, while rehearsing for the class play, as as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a figurative B.A.J. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity, <laughs> which I could have used. Rehearsals end for the day, but you notice Scott and Miranda still sitting near the stage watching something. It looks like two farmers handing a bunch of apples back and forth. Oh, hello! You're just in time for our study session. To aid our comprehension of arithmetic, I have hired these actors to reenact the fiendishly difficult word problems in our textbook. You see, Farmer Jim has nine apples. And he gives six to Farmer Greg. How many apples does Farmer Jim have left? They're like riddles. I don't know how we'd ever understand them without these actors. Usually it works on the first try. But we've been doing this for over an hour now. And we still don't understand. Is there something wrong with our study method? No, of course not, for Daddy has assured me that I am never wrong. We need only change some small detail. Huh, so then we have, what if instead of apples they were oranges? What if instead of farmers they were trains? Oh, God. It's <laughs> crazy. Let's go with this one. I just, I like the sound of this. Of course! The problem is that we simply aren't thinking enough, big enough. Deploy the trains! Suddenly two massive train engines crash to the ceiling, crushing the stage, the actors, and most importantly, the apples. 
No, the apples. Now how will we finish our homework? I now realize that this was a terrible idea. Why did you let us do this? A very good question. While you ponder it, you lose two charm and one smart fudge. Man, that is not doing good for us. Past two two tries, we've, we've lost points. It's no bueno, no bueno, 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 bueno. All right, let's try it again. The table you choose is quite crowded. Liam sits across from Randa, who is flanked by two well-dressed servants. One of the servants cuts a slice of celebrary steak and feeds it to the other. Seriously, Miranda, you have servants to chew your food for you? What? Of course not. That would be barbaric. The servants happily swallow the Salisbury steak. I have servants to eat for me. They're called eating serfs. Don't you have any? First of all, no, I don't eat food. Second of all, that totally defeats the purpose of eating. Aren't you worried about starving? Why would I be? My serfs get all the calories. I need to stay fit and healthy. Ugh. I have no objective reason to care about this, but suddenly it's all I care about. Someone convince Miranda to stop this madness. Maybe you should start this madness, Liam. Imagine all the food you can Instagram without having to eat any of it. But Miranda, look at the content smile that the servant's face. You think he's eating for you, but secretly he's eating for himself. Hmm. Oh, man. Which one should I choose? This one's a tough one. Because I feel like she'd be okay with this one, but... Let's go with this one. No! It can't be! Gordo say it isn't true! But Gordo can't say anything because his mouth is full of delicious Salisbury steak. Salisbury steak, which he is obviously eating entirely for his own benefit. Traitorous dog! Do you know? Do you want me to starve to death? Is that your plan? I think maybe he was just taking advantage of the fact that you don't understand how food works. Taking advantage of me? Scoundrel! Burpee, eat Gordo for me at once! The two servants look at each other, then stuff as much food as they can into their mouths before fleeing the cafeteria. Alas, how will I ever get my recommended daily allowance of nutrients now? You could try eating. Myself? But how? You and Liam have a ton of fun laughing at Miranda as she learns how to eat food for apparently the first time in her life. Ah, great. So I make a moment with Liam. <laughs> ah. All right. Maybe let's go to the outdoors and see what's what she's selling. Shouldn't you be out there trying to romance a classmate or something? Anyway, welcome. Uh, let's see. Are you sure about this? You can always use the Wikipedia. A Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Let's try that one. I don't know what it does, but whatever. Yeah, who wouldn't who would want to save money for their college fund when you can spend it on weird stuff that's most likely useless? That's the spirit, champ. Yeah, great. All right, so I need to get more money because I just spend it. Then day you spend some time on the library's PC mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving alg algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any effing idea how it really works. Anyway, you get plus two bitcoins, which is equal to two million dollars. Which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. 
you settle down on a computer to the to do the kind of internet research that you will ne necessitate clearing your browsing history. When you notice three of your most effable classmates deep in thought at the next computer over. Have you tried uh, clicking it? I cannot click it, friend Scott. It is a checkbox marked, I am not a robot. I am a robot, ergo clicking is impossible. Okay, I'm out of ideas unless... Have you tried clicking it? Preparing to vent air in an approximation of organic ex ex aspiration. Bye. Oh, oh, Oz, maybe you can help us. Calculester was just attempting to participate in a heated online discussion regarding the proper pronunciation of giraffe, which we all know is pronounced giraffe with a J, even though it's spelled with a G. But this page is initially designed to prevent robot participation. I passed the tur Turing test and the Voigtkampf test, but this test, it is too much for me. Don't give up, Cal. There's got to be a way to do it, right, Oz? Uh, let's see, just click the damn box. This is more of the anti-robot discrimination. We've seen for years, time to fight for robot rights to use the internet freely through aggressive lobbying. Hmm, I think we could do this one, right? Lobbying? I don't understand. Is this a democracy thing? I think it's when you wait in the lobby whining and whimpering because no one will let you outside. Searching internal database for a most plausible definition. Definition bound. Lobbying noun. Seeking to influence a politician or public official on an issue. Oh! Father does this all the time. We call it gunboat di diplomacy. I do it all the time, too. Last year, I collected a thousand signatures to convince the governor to make sports an official state bird. Perfect! Never has there been a team so well suited to influence a legislative body. This is factually inaccurate, but I am moved by your concern for my rights. Then it's settled! Let's manipulate the opinions of our representatives by any means necessary. One letter writing campaign, two pol political assassinations, and three threats of invasion later. We did it, I think. I don't understand politics, really. We do, we did do it, Scott. Of course, our legislators weren't thrilled about the idea of a completely unrestricted internet. But we struck a compromise. If anyone's going to be kicked off the internet, it should be humans. This doesn't affect us at all, because we're monsters. That's right, Scott. And since humans were the ones causing all the problems on the internet to begin with, I'd say we've done a good deed today. Excellent. The CAPTCHA test has been replaced with an anti-human test. Prove you are not a human by sol solving complex math equation while watching this video of a puppy being killed with hammer. <laughs> Finally, something I can do. <laughs> oh my god. The pure joy on Calculester's face totally makes up for... All the flagrant manipulation of your polit political system, you gain two boldness and one charm. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, let's go over here with uh, Miranda and uh, Zoe. You sit down with Zoe and Miranda. Miranda is paying no attention to her eating syrups. And Zoe is paying too much attention to them. 
What are you doing, Zoe? Don't you know how rude it is to ogle another woman's eating serves? I'm not ogling. I'm researching for my fanfic. My dear, when it is about royalty, it is not called fanfic. It is called propaganda. What? Oh, I'm not writing about you right now. I'm writing about your eating serves. What? Yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm going to really dive into their inner lives, their hopes, their dreams and desires. Oh, don't be silly. Serves don't have any of those things. Do they, serves? The eating serves eyes dart between Miranda and Zoe. Terrify. Should they speak or just shut up and eat? You're right, Miranda. Most serfs don't have thoughts or feelings. Only the really expensive or rare ones do. Make menacing eyes contacts with the two serfs. Silently place a piece of sushi in your mouth and chew violently. <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, menacing eye contact with the two serfs. Piece of sushi in your mouth and chew violently. <laughs> Or, uh, you're right, Miranda must serves. Uh, I think I'll go with this one. Just to save the serfs, because uh, if, I, if I put this one, they might, she might kill them off and replace them. So I'll do this one. Since Miranda's eating serfs are fish people, this is a lot like walking up to a human and deliberately eating a finger in front of them. I'm sorry for what I'm about to say, but your show-off and intimidation really makes Miranda surfs climb up. Ah, yes! Stop the threats of violence! A true sign of royal lineage! <laughs> what is with mortals and not wanting their flesh eaten? It's such a weird hang-up. If by weird you mean useful for controlling the masses, then I suppose I agree! The eating serves try their best to ignore you as they stuff food into their quivering mouths. You feel like you did the right thing, but you don't have much of a conscience, so that's not saying much. Anyway, Miranda's happy. <laughs> I need more creativity. Ah, shit. Hey, would you study and prepare for your future when you can come here and buy some weird shit instead, am I right? Uh... I guess we can use this. I'm always amazed at how people keep coming and buying all this stupid crap. Intriguing. <laughs> Uh, and now you gotta make them. Um, uh, of course, you're in the library. Why? Why do you do this to me? Go outdoors. We need some fun. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes all full crazy. You have no idea how it escalated so much, but at one point, there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rat party. You gain plus two fun. Afterwards, a royal, royal procession, 500 members, strong, strong informs you that Miranda has requested your presence at dinner tonight. The restaurant she chosen is so fancy, its name is unpronounceable by any making it less than six figures but with all these heavily armed guards around you you think it's unwise to refuse and so later that night this restaurant is remarkably charming for a lower born establishment granted the flatware is only platinum not diamond and this one seems to be significantly less than a thousand years old but at least our table is held 
by three weeping serfs that it as it as it always ought to be. Jackon one bowls of rubies and a bottle of actual gold, if you would be so kind, and my suitor will have. Quick, pick something before she realizes that you've never been anywhere fancier than Wilmer's Chicken Hut. It doesn't matter what I order, anything will taste good as long as I eat it with you. Ooh. I will do that one. That's the sweetest thing anyone has ever said to me. Most people in my family simply order the most expensive thing on the menu. It doesn't even have to be edible. In fact, it usually isn't. But you're willing to actually eat food in front of me? I'm charmed. She's so charmed, in fact, that she doesn't notice that you never actually ordered anything. Score. You gain plus two smarts and one fun. Huh, that was interesting. Alright, so... I guess. Let's go. Might as well keep, <laughs> keep going with it. You arrive at your chosen table to find that Miranda has locked one of her eating serves in an Iron Maiden. You're unfazed, but Calculester is very phased. Friend Miranda isn't locking your unpaid intern in a spike field sarcophagus unethical. Unethical? Unethical, unethical, agitate, unconsistent with rules and standards of ethnics. Ethics? Oh, you mean those things poor people have instead of royal titles? But I thought that eth ethics were a critical part of being a good organic creature. That's a common misconception. Key to being good is having a lot of money and punishing anyone who dares disrespect you. For example, this saucy Serb dared to put ketchup on the hot dog she was eating on my behalf. As if I were the sort of person to put ketchup on a hot dog. 48 hours in the Iron Maiden shit teacher. Warning. Friend's statements are inconsistent with internal moral compass. Exist. 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 What is that word? Existential. Existential crisis imminent. Uh oh. Quick. Set Miranda straight. Or set. <laughs> Calculester crooked. What's this? Calculester disagreeing with Miranda? Looks like it's disrespectful prison time for someone else, too. Miranda, let's punish your serf in a different way, say, by giving her a frowny face sticker with a really aggressive glitter. I kind of want to freaking punish Calculester, <laughs> just to see how that goes. Right you are, Oz. Luckily, I always keep this second Iron Maiden on hand for emergencies. An Iron Maiden is an effective form of punishment for me, as I am made of steel and do not require sleep or freedom. However, I understand that punishing me is important to you, and so I will attempt to appear upset. Engage lamentation. Oh, no, please, I am punished. That's more like it. Maybe you'll think twice before disagreeing with me in the future. I think trillions of times per second, but for the sake of simplicity, yes, I agree to think at least twice. Calculester remains in the Iron Maiden for the rest of lunch. He doesn't seem to mind, and you get some alone time with Miranda. Nice. Uh, nothing special happened, I think. I think I need more money. Can we get more money? Yeah. That day you spent some time on the library's PC playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision. 
but who cares? This time it paid off, so F it. You gain plus two money. Oh my word! What a wonderful, beautiful, exciting day! I hope someone can share in my joy. My great aunt sea monster, unholy terror, Mick Craffin face, oh shoot Lulu, has just received an award for her work with shipwrecks. She's now one of their leading causes. I want to send her my congratulations, but no one from the postal service will go near her there for fear of their lives. Oh, if only some brave hero would volunteer to deliver this important and time-sensitive missive. Why, is a letter of congratulations so time-sensitive, you ask? Well, hmm, it's because of, well, you see, it's that these are very special congratulations with instructions to... Do something congratulatory for herself, you know? Just get her the letter. There's something fishy about this request, but you've never let that stop you before. You come up with a foolproof plan. So let's see, you get Hire Scuber, the underwater taxi service, to deliver the letter for you. Dynamite the toilet, dive into the sewer, and swim there yourself. <laughs> Which one would be cooler though? You get to hire the scuba, the underwater taxi service, to deliver the letter for you. Or, dynamite the toilet, dive into the sewer, and swim there yourself. Huh. Well, I guess. Let's do it. If you want something done right, then there's absolutely no, no way to pawn it off on someone else. Do it yourself. You grab the stick of dynamite you won from Damien in a game of multiplayer solitaire and head to the bathroom. From an environmentalist standpoint, it's probably not great that the school sewer system leads directly to the heart of the ocean. But it's great for your p purposes. You swim all the way to the lair of the great on-sea monster, unholy terror, Mikrenaface o Chululu. Who, you must admit, looks fantastic for a beast of her certain number of centuries. You give her the letter and crawl back up the toilet before you can find out what she means by stay for dinner. A few days later, you see that the fruits the mirror of your labor. Thank you so much for getting my letter to my Aussie monster. She said she would act on it immediately. Act on the congratulations that I said by thanking me, which she said, it's so it's all over and neatly wrapped up now. Nothing further happening here. Yup, seems entirely legit. Glad you swam down a toilet for whatever totally above board operation is going on here. You gain plus two charm and one boldness. Ah, right. well, let's see what happens. Yeah, sure, why not? Prom? Sure. How could I say no to my beautiful accomplice? Um, what do I mean by accomplice? I mean, it was clear all this time, right? I stole some eggs from that sea monster. Then my serfs cooked an omelet and you took pictures of the water polo team eating it. And remember when we totally stole the addresses of the whole team from Principal Giant Spider Computer? Such good times! Then it was just a matter of delivering the pictures and the address to the sea monster, who by my calculations will soon be hunting all of those unpolite peasants down. They rejected me, and I am sure it has always been clear that you do not reject Miranda Vanderbilt. So in a way, it was sort of all on them, right? It has been so sweet of you, my charming knight in shining armor. Damn. You feel a bit bad both for being an accomplice 
to multiple manslaughter and for the feeling weirdly aroused by Miranda's ruthlessness. <laughs> you, you aren't kidding. Holy shit. But love is blind, so a uh, date it is. You have a delightful evening, and in the end, isn't that what counts? Isn't it? By the end of it, Miranda even invites you to her house to show you the corpse of the water polo team, which she's had stolen from their funerals. You're still troubled by the fact that kind of excites you, but obviously Miranda isn't troubled about being excited by a successful, merciless vendetta. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> So you end up celebrating your victory and feasting over what's left of her enemies. Oh, I got a special ending. So oh, cool. I didn't even see that coming. But yeah, I got a secret ending. Isn't that nice? Let's see. Oz most likely to be banned from Disney World for the world's worst reasons. <laughs> and then you got Miranda's quote. Oh, are we? Oh, are we feeling complete? Well, not enough silverware to for a city in the cafeteria. <laughs> let's see, we got 11 new events and innings. Oh, that's interesting. Those six weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, it, life happened and it was wonderful. Did they stay? It seems Miranda still isn't sure about what exactly porn is. Damien became an interior designer specializing in torture machines. Last month, Vogue magazine called his product the refined marriage between macabre and the chic. And chic. Holly graduated from doing lots of ayahuasca's, and now she appears to halluc uh, appears to hallucinating people and act as their spiritual animal. Okay. For those six weeks, the monster palm seemed larger than life, and then it was gone just like that. The battle for monster palm might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in the war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Huh, that was nice. I got a special ending that time. Ooh. I wonder if we got any new pictures, though, from the looks of it. Ooh, look at... Oh my god, the Jenny, all those hot dogs. And of course, the silverware. Oh my god, what are they growing over there? Of course, those, of, those would be the three sporty types. Hmm. I love these pictures. But I can leave the music on just because of copyright. I know what sucks about copyright sometimes. Oh, I love that stash. That stash is nice. <laughs> oh my god, there's the Huntress. Oh, I love that picture. Hey, there's that new demon girl. Ooh, they're doing karaoke. That's nice. <laughs> yep, yep. Stage prop. Usual. Uh, come on, any new pictures? Poor favor. And then we got... Uh, Still looking for new pictures here. Huh. 
All right, guys. Well, that was Monster Prom. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Monster Prom. Uh, if you want to try to buy the game on uh, on either Humble Bundle or Steam, I will have the link below for it. And uh, yeah, buy the game. Play the play it with your friends. It's pretty fun. It has uh, different endings, a lot of different endings, and uh, it's very fun. I love the pictures, like at the ending as well. There's a lot more images and endings to to unlock as well with the new characters and whatnot. Yeah, have fun and enjoy it and play the game. And I'll see you guys later. Until next time.